Hello and welcome back to TNN's coverage of the world's nine best fantasy football players league. I'm your host, and this is what we have for you this week. Week seven was a wild week with some big wins for teams looking to make a push into the playoffs. Hammond Throw was able to secure a win over the SWAT team, and TNN reached out for comments. Also, Commissioner Tooch has asked me to remind Brett, Will, Vanek, and Joe that they still need to pay their $50 buy-in. And now, here is Danny Football with his picks for Week 8. Hey, what's up, guys? The world's nine best fantasy football players expert, Danny Football here, back with another week of expert predictions. Last week, pretty good for me, going 5-1, and one, bringing my total on the year up to a very nice 22-8. and eight. My guest, Grayson, went 4-2, and two, unfortunately unable to beat the expert. But now, it's a new week, there's a new guest, and a new chance to beat the expert. So guests, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey everybody, it's uh, Danny Stortz. Offensive coordinator, um, partial owner of the historic franchise, undefeated, never lost here. Uh, excited to be with you, Danny Football, for an ex- exciting slate that we got this week. Ready to make some picks and hopefully uh, beat the expert. Yeah, Danny, it's it's great to have you on. Uh, you you do currently have the worst picking percentage against the experts. Never beaten the expert through uh, four appearances on the show, so. I'm wishing you all the best of luck this week. Usually I don't say that, but uh, we'll see. Maybe maybe your luck will will change in year five here. Let's hope so. I, you know, love to turn things around this week. All right. First up, we have too many conks taking on Jesus Christ. It's Jay Sanborn. Conks currently favored at 67%. Both of these teams have, uh, they've kind of been in rough shape this season. I think this is a matchup that's going to be really big for both of them, especially for the Conks. I know they really want to finally tie everything together, make that playoff push, and they are, in fact, on a two-game win streak coming into this one. They're getting Cooper Cup back, which is obviously big for the team. They've got a little bit of momentum behind them, and maybe, just maybe, Joe will be able to squeak into the playoffs, but this is going to be a big matchup to determine that one, for Nooch and uh, Jesus Christ, it's Jay Sanborn. I, I'm not really sure where this team is headed, what they're thinking right now. I'm guessing that they're probably going to look to maximize their draft pick. Uh, they're not really in playoff contention. They're not really one of those top teams in this league. I wouldn't be surprised if they started to make some trades over the coming weeks. And I think this one, this matchup, is going to be all about the momentum I think the Conks are probably a stronger team, and I'm going to pick them in this one. I think that's a it's a wise pick, Danny Football. Um, it's funny that you would put this match up first because this is the last one I prepared for. I have no notes. Um, that's why it's see, first. <laughs> <laughs> seems like a pretty uh pretty boring matchup, you know. Like, like you said, um, I think you put it more uh, diplomatic, but uh, you said that Jay Sanborn might be looking to maximize their draft pick. I believe uh, us in the, in layman's terms, we would call it tanking. Is that forbidden in this league? I don't, I don't know. You know, don't I check the bylaws. I don't think it's in there. <laughs> um, but bro, I think, you know, it's pretty, pretty clear. Too many conks is going to pull this one out. I think Jay Sanborn has too many question marks on, especially on the defensive end of the ball. You know, I'm, I am an offensive coordinator. What, what do I know about defense? But um, I've got Miguel Romanello in my ear telling me, um, um, yeah, they suck on defense. So uh, I'm going to go with the Conks on this one. All right. Next up, we have Hammond Throw taking on Team Big Chungus 22. Big Chungus currently favored at 55%. Who do you like here? You know, Hammond, Hammond Throw, they're coming off of a uh, pretty massive win, I, I think. I wouldn't be surprised if this if this show started off with uh, Visconti calling in and you know rubbing in that he was able to beat the SWAT team uh, last week. But really, uh, 
I think he might have pulled out too many stops last week, used up, you know, the entire playbook, nothing left in the tank um, for this week. It's it's one of those uh, sneaky upsets where, you know, Notre Dame beats Texas A&M. Next week they play NIU and lose. It's it's that kind of situation. Um, also, I, I've been looking into the, uh, some of the advanced metrics of the, of the league, and Visconti, one of the least efficient managers out mm. there. Um, and I don't know if, you know, lack of efficiency is really going to be a winning formula. The Chung guy, they're one of the un- most unluckiest teams, most unluckiest. That's the, one of the unluckiest teams in the league, uh, Owen seven. I think their luck is going to turn around this week with a big win against Hammond throw, get the first W of the, of the season. Yeah, that's that's a good pick here. I I was I was kind of on the same page here. I I think the fact that Big Chungus is favored in this one tells you all you need to know about this ham and throw team. They're currently projected for 152 points this week, which is the second lowest in the entire league, only higher than don't, don't. undefeated never lost. Uh the Chung guy on the other hand they're now at 0-7. I, I am going to officially declare their season over, dead. And I think they really need to start looking towards next season, rebuilding, shipping away some of those older guys that they have on their team. Because for whatever reason, the luck was not with them. They just did not have it this year. With that being said, though, I do expect this one to be pretty close, and the Chungai are due for a win at some point. I would not at all be shocked if that was this week, but as much as it pains me to do so, I'm going to go with Ham and Throw. It's very hard to pick an 0-7 team. Will, I know you're a big fan of the show. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I just I can't do it. You guys got to show me something in order for me to pick you, and I am going to go unfortunately, with Hammond Throw. Next up, we have Blood, Sweat, and Beers taking on the Judon Noodles. Noodles favored here at 56%. These are two very, very middle-of-the-road teams. Uh, This could be a big matchup to determine their late-season trajectories. I think this could be a real make-or-break week for either of these teams. One interesting thing to note here is that both of these teams have one of those high-profile, high-name ID wide receivers that was recently traded in Amari Cooper and Devontae Adams. Both of them, I expect, are probably looking to use their new positions on NFL teams to make an impression and make a big impact in the real league of the world's nine best fantasy football players. I mentioned before, I think that Blood, Sweat, and Beers should be tanking, and I think that message may have finally gotten through to them. They've now dropped two in a row, setting themselves up very nicely for that early draft pick that this team very desperately needs. I think that momentum is going to continue this week, and this pick, I would like to be very clear, this pick is not at all an endorsement of the Noodles, but I am going to pick them in this one. Yeah, Danny Football, I, uh, I'm i feeling some similar sentiments. The fact that the Noodles are at the top of their division at 4-3. and three It's sad. With, I mean, the team that they have, that is that is sad. It's a sad, sad state of the league. It really um, makes you question what all the other teams in that division are even doing. Are they even trying to feel the competitive team? That's a great question. They, got, they have one of the lo- lowest points for in the league. And they still have a winning record. Ridiculous. Fraudulent. I think they have a say. they have a they've had a cupcake schedule so far, but really like the fact that they have a winning record is ridiculous. And I think this is a can't lose game for them if they want to even make the playoffs or even avoid the the fraud tag. Um, for blood, sweat, and beers, you know they they're in a they're in a tough division, but they're also not the best team. Like uh, I, I talked about efficiency with uh, Hammond Throw and Visconti, uh, Jacob's actually the most efficient manager. Oh. But you have to question if that's because he's a good manager or because he has absolutely nobody on the bench. <laughs> I I don't know. I'll let the viewer decide on that one because he has the lowest max points for out there. So 
you know. Um, with that being said, I'm going to, I'm going to go with the noodles in this one as well. I think they have to win this game in order to keep their season on track. And, uh, I think they'll, they'll be able to go out there and do just that this week. Next up, we have undefeated, never lost, taking on worthy of love, worthy of love favored at 57%. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Um, I'll start off with worthy of love, uh, two and five team with two lucky wins. That leaves a lot of question marks for that team because I think honestly their their record and Big Chunga Chungus record should probably be flipped. Um, yeah, they're in probably the easiest division and they're at the bottom of that division. Um, not a lot going for that team. Um, that being said, they're going up against the greatest team of all time, undefeated, never lost. And as you pointed out earlier, um, we are dealing with quite a few injuries. This week, um, not fielding our best team. You know, we we've had a pretty pretty tough schedule playing. I think all four of the top four teams in the league in the mm-hmm. first like six seven weeks um, put up a pretty good fight against the uh, mental brick walls last week. Um, only lost by a few points there, uh, but that that game kind of hit our team pretty hard, uh, and you know we're dealing with a lot so. It's going to be a tough, tough week. Uh, I hope we can pull it off, but um, I'm going to pick undefeated, never lost in this one. Yeah, I, I like that pick here. I, I've i been saying for a couple of weeks now, wh- whenever Worthy of Love is in the matchup, that I just do not have a lot to say about this team. So I really uh, took some time before this show to go and try to dig deep and find anything positive to say about this team. And what what I've settled on is the fact that DeAndre Hopkins may now have a non-zero value after the trade. And, you know, it could be a good opportunity for Tom to jump on. Maybe he does something. Maybe he could trade him away to some other team. I It's hard to find any silver linings with Worthy of Love right now, but that's... That's about the best that I could come up with. But things are also pretty bleak for Undefeated Never Lost. They have both Ayuk and Nico Collins on IR. Ayuk is done for the season. He's probably the best player they have on their roster. I think this matchup could be one that is really ugly. And I I would like to advise all of the viewers at home to avert their eyes from this matchup. This should come with a disclaimer uh, before like viewer discretion is advised. This may cause headaches, uh, (laughs) brain aneurysms, nausea. Do not watch this matchup. We cannot be held responsible for anything that occurs on the screen here. So I'm going to make a very ugly pick here. And I'm going to go, I believe for the first time this season, with Worthy of Love to pick up the win in this matchup. I, I got one one more thing to say real quick. Um, I don't know if you've been watching the uh, the transaction history, but we have uh, recently dumped one Deshaun Watson from our team. So hopefully there's some... Good karma some, maybe some coming your way. Good karma coming our way. Exactly. Exactly. All right, moving on. We have Team M. Vanek taking on the Tex Arcana Bandits. Bandits currently favored at 51%. This one, really close. I think it's one that could be really important down the stretch. Both of these teams are clearly in playoff contention. A win could go a long way, and I expect to see both of these teams in the playoffs. Could be a potential playoff preview here. Um, Look, everyone knows about... The Bandits, fans of the show will know that I'm high on the Bandits. I am on the train, and I'm never getting off. But what people aren't talking about is that Team M. Vanek has been able to ride a train in their own right in the form of Derek Henry. The man has been an absolute beast this season, and the trade they made for him last year is kind of looking like a steal right now. He's been a great addition for this team and really helped propel them into that top tier of the league. Uh, I think this is going to be a tough matchup for Team M. Vanek and for the Bandits. 
the Bandits. They've got Puka coming back, which could be a big boost for this team. Um, I think it ends up being pretty close, but I'm going to give a very slight edge to the Bandits in this one. Yeah, I think, like you said, obviously two two playoff teams here. So uh, could be a potential um, championship preview. Um, both very solid teams. I think Texarkana Bandits, they've had some grueling games. I mean, if they if they weren't so good at putting up points, they could be at two and five right now. But I mean, they, they just put up points like no one else. And M. Vanek, also a solid team. Uh, not dealing with too many injuries, has a lot of depth in that on that bench. Um, I think both are set up for some deep playoff runs here. But uh, this week, I think I'm going to have to go with uh, M. Vanek um, for no other reason than hopefully to beat the expert. I like it. <laughs> Strategic pick. <laughs> yeah. Finally, in our marquee matchup of the week, we have the SWAT team taking on the mental brick walls. SWAT currently favored at 57%. Who do you like in this matchup? So for the SWAT team, you know, last week, I think they, they might have rested a couple starters against Hammond Throw. I think maybe Commissioner Tooch was trying to um, give the appearance that maybe the Pac-12 or Pac-4 and SEC divisions aren't as... Uh, there isn't such a big divide, but when really there is, you know, the commissioner is maybe trying to defraud the public with a little, um, a little false narrative of balance in the league. Uh, I heard the SWAT team is very concerned about load management right now. That's that's the story of the week. That's that's why they apparently lost to Hammond Throw, load which makes management. sense because because you gotta have some load management if you're gonna play deep into playoffs. So mm-hmm. it makes sense. And this team is set up to do just that. Um, and another team set up to do just that is the mental brick walls. And again, another potential championship preview right here this week. This is two solid matchups uh, to, for the viewers to watch so that they mm-hmm. can avert their eyes from certain other games. Um, but yeah, again, again, the mental brick walls, they had a pretty grueling matchup against the uh, SEC heavyweight UNL. Um, last week, they barely squeaked out the win there. Um, so I think they're, you know, they're feeling a little more sore this week. They, and I think the SWAT team is going to be able to, to get, to get the win in this one. Yeah. I, I like that pick here. This, this is a big matchup, marquee matchup for a reason. We, we actually have a very good slate of matchups here in week eight. I think a lot of these are going to be postseason previews. I. Uh, in one way or another, probably some for the toilet bowl. Um, here we have a 7-0 and team in the brick walls going up against the four-time defending champs in the SWAT team. It's really hard to get better than this. Between this and the Team M. Vanek versus Bandits matchup, uh, this may be the best the league has ever seen. The brick walls, they took that big hit Last week, when Chris Godwin went down for the season, he's been really one of the top wide receivers in fantasy this year, and I feel like has not been getting a lot of credit from people. I'm very curious to see how they fill that hole here. The SWAT team, they've also got some injury problems of their own uh, with their top two wide receivers right now, Debo fighting off his pneumonia, and DK with some kind of leg injury. They're both questionable this week. Um, the SWAT team, they do have some depth, but obviously both of these teams are not going to be at full strength. I still think this is a really good matchup. Could really matter down the line as far as seeding for the playoffs. I'm going to call my shot, though, and say that the SWAT team is going to hand the Brick Walls their first loss of the year. <laughs> Well, Danny, thank you so much for being on with me this week. I'm wishing you all the best of luck. Of course, not as good as me. You can't beat the expert. But if you do, after all these years, I would not be too upset about it. Uh, It's always great to have you on. And I look forward to seeing you back here in the future. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Danny Football. Uh, Love what TNN is doing this year. Um, Switching up the format a little bit, but still going strong. We love to see it. Uh, Hopefully, I can you know, finally pull, 
pull one out against the expert and be uh, back for the playoffs. And thank you, Danny Football and guest Danny, for those great picks. That's all we have for you this time. Be sure to tune in next week to see how things shook out. I'm your host, and this has been TNN. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell.